Kia ora everyone and welcome to another look at all things cycling with Sky Sport. Against all the odds really, we've managed three grand tours, we've basically made it to the end of the season. Um, Del Woodford alongside me as always. Del, we'll start with the Vuelta which just finished up. Uh, Primoz Roglic and Jumbo Visma getting the win finally. The, the Tour de France demons have been banished to an extent I guess. Um, what did you make of that finish and, and a deserved win to Roglic, uh, Roglic in the end? Yeah, it was. And um, a really, really great race by the Jumbo Visma team. I think even to just pull themselves out of the ashes of the, of the Tour de France uh, said a lot. And it says a lot about, about Roglic himself. You know, he came out of the Tour de France. He had a, a really strong world championships. And then, you know, to, to rally, to, to come through, to defend that Vuelta title, uh, an amazing performance. And I think, you know, for me, uh, what made it really special was he, he wasn't at the same level he was at the Tour de France, and he still had to fight tooth and nail for, for, this, for this tour. And there was a lot of people trying to take, take that title. Carapaz was, was riding really well. Um, Carthy as well. You know, Hugh Carthy rode, rode a fantastic race. And a grand tour. We've talked about it, Henry, you know, the closeness of these races right throughout, you know, all the grand tours, the, the Tour de France, the Giro, now the Vuelta being won essentially on time bonuses. And that, that's, you know, I think 2006 or 2008 was the last time uh, that happened. And just shows you at the Vuelta, it's always tight. Those time bonuses really come into play. And uh, that's what got Primus Roglic home, those four stage wins, a brilliant time trial win and, and those bonus seconds. Yeah, and, and that's something I quite like too. It gives good impetus to the, the guys, the GC favourites, to actually try and, and hunt for stage wins and not just finish in the bunch safely. So I, lo I like the bonus seconds that are on offer. Um, Carapaz, you mentioned a great ride from him. He came up just short, but he got pretty close there. He definitely had Yumbo, uh, Yumbo worried, I think, on stage 17 in particular. A CS, that he had them on the ropes and, uh, you know, it just showed Primus Roglic how, how calm he was in that situation. Made, they made a great decision to, to have somebody wait with him as well and give him some support because, you know, it could have really turned bad on the stage. So Carapaz threw everything at it. Um, probably himself he could have done with a teammate as well to, to help him out. He rode really well. And I think he's an, another rider who's had uh, an outstanding season considering at the start of, of this the season, his whole focus was the Giro d'Italia to defend that title. Got pulled into the, the Tour de France team. Really didn't have the form for that race. We only saw that in that last, really in that last week, and coming into form. Then you know, missing the Giro, coming into the Vuelta. So yeah, very very good ride. And I'd love to see what he's going to do next year if he gets the opportunity to focus just on one Grand Tour because you know he's he's a sensational rider. I love this aggression, the way he just attacks and attacks those climbs and um, I think again that's been another real highlight of, of this compact season is the aggressive nature of the racing and the attacks we're seeing and you know the guys that, that have you know finished on the podium uh, the young guys coming through some of the old guys coming back into form you know, I, was, I was delighted with Dan Martin's ride I thought great ride in the, in the Vuelta finishing fourth overall just off the podium a strong finish for him, um, you know, and he's going to be looking good for, for next year as, as well. So, yeah, really exciting, compact season. Um, the, the Giro was, was, a, was a great race, tight. The Vuelta was, I think, even more exciting again. Uh, and George Bennett's performance, uh, really outstanding. 12th overall in the general classification, and the work he did for Primus Roglic at key times was, was just so vital. Absolutely. Um, I think George had a, a great effort, I think, considering he basically, you know, was, was pretty done after the Tour de France and the World Champs and got the call up to, you know, hang out with Primoz again and have another crack. And he managed to sort of pick himself up and get ready for that. And, and like you say, a key role, 12th overall. Um, and he, he was just there when it mattered most a lot of the time for Primoz and, and putting him in the right position. Yes, he, he, he's had an outstanding season really the Tour de France he was brilliant he was I think even more brilliant at the, at the Vuelta um, you know they were all tired none of them were at their best he, he had that injury to overcome and the fatigue of the Tour the World Championships as you mentioned Henry but well you know I just I guess that's how much respect they've got for Primoz Roglic to, to pick themselves up and, and come back and fight the way they did uh, it says a lot about Jumbo Visma as a team and you know they're a real force. They've learned a lot in this really tough season and they're going to be 
uh, stronger and better for it next year. And, you know, they'll be fighting for all the Grand Tours again. I don't think there's a race that they'll go, in, a Grand Tour that they won't go into with a rider uh, capable of winning the race. So they're in a really good position. If the team sticks together, as I think George mentioned through the week, if we can keep the band together, uh, we're going to be hard to beat. So, and I think he's dead right. Another Kiwi um, with the, with a good performance was Dion Smith at Mitchelton Scott. Um, didn't have too much to, to shout about during the first sort of week, um, but really came into his own on some of those um, sprint stages. We saw fifth on one and, and he got promoted to third on the other. Um, quite promising signs, I reckon, for, for him. You know, he's, he's not an out-and-out -out sprinter, but he's showing that on those stages, slide uphill finishes, stuff like that, he can really compete with some of the best guys in the world. Yes, he can, and he, he, he's... I think he'll get more opportunity next year. You know, you've mentioned it before, Daryl Impey's moving on and Dion's the ideal guy to, to sort of take over that position in the team and, and get some support. Um, he's had an outstanding season. You know, let's not forget, you know, sixth in the Milan San Remo. Like, the, the, one of the monuments of the sport. If you're up there in that race, you know, you, you've you're someone that people have got to keep an eye on. And whenever you line up, the win he had in the, the Coppa Sabatini race in Italy, it's a tough race to win. Um, it's, it's punchy, uh, really good result. Numerous top 10 placings, the, the two, two great rides in, in the Vuelta, um, again, in a really short season, he's come out of it really well. I think uh, the Vuelta being late, having form late, it's really exciting for him going into the start of the 2021 season and, and the opportunities that that could present. So, um, yeah, very impressed with Dion Smith. And also, even though he rides under the Australian licence, let's not forget he's from Palmerston North, uh, Robert Stannard. 22 years of age, I tell you what, this kid, I, I think he's a rock star. Um, yeah, he rode Perry, Perry Rebay last year really impressively. And that, that's a tough race for someone his build and, and his, his, you know, his experience to step up in the way he rode in that. Uh, the, the placings he had, I think three in the top 10 this, in, the, in the Vuelta, um, capable of, of, I think, winning a really big race. I, I, I give him a couple of years, you know, the way he rode in the Vuelta, I wouldn't be surprised we'll see him in flesh for alone, Liège, Baston Liège type classics. Um, even the way he rode at Rebay, like, you know, in, in Flanders, like Dion, a real chance, uh, great talent and fantastic Grand Tour, you know, debut by him, Re really impressed. Yeah, he, he was awesome. He, he, you know, made a really good impression and, and he'll only get better for riding something like that. Um, someone else who will only get better looking ahead with that Grand Tour under his belt is Chris Froome, of course, his last race for Ineos. He's off to um, the Israel team next year. Obviously, he didn't, you know, he didn't really animate this race too much and he, you know, he wasn't up the front or anything like that. But I think both mentally and physically, a really important race for, for him to get through looking ahead to next year. Well, he was a different rider, wasn't he? From, you know, the first week to the last week of the Vuelta, you could see the improvement in Chris Froome. He did a lot of work on the front. Uh, you know, he, he did everything he could for Carapaz and looked after him, put him in, you know, some good positions. Yeah, yeah, you're 100 percent right. I think the the lateness of the the season has played into the hands of Chris Froome. Whether he'll get back to the level pre his, his accident, um, we'll have to wait and see. But what what a way to to end the year! Hugely motivated. So training going forward for him will be be much easier now. Uh, the new team they'll they'll be delighted seeing how how well he's he's ridden in, in the last week of the Vuelta. It's exciting for, for the sport to actually see him moving on from Ineos, coming into a new team um, who are trying to you know, build their depth and become contenders in the, in the race. Uh, so they've got not only Froome, uh, Dan Martin, who we spoke about this before, also in Israel, you know, the cycling um, team. So they're going to be a bit of a, bit of a force. They're going to be, whether they can win a Grand Tour, who knows, but they're going to be in the mix uh, somewhere along the way. And Chris Froome, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be writing him off. I think he's just going to get better and better. And what's going to be interesting to see is what he decides to ride himself. Is it going to be, you know, a Tour of the Welter or is it just going to be a Giro um, attack? You know, which Grand Tour? I think it'll be the, the Tour of the scenario. But, you know, I guess he'll, we'll, we'll learn more if the season gets underway when it should in January. And, uh, and looking more, more locally now with what we were jokingly calling the fourth Grand Tour, the, uh, the Tour of Southland, a, a great... Uh, seven days or so of racing down there. Aaron Gate uh, has won it in the past, of course, coming and winning again. 
went right down to the last stage. Uh, Michael Vink just behind him and, and James Oram in third. Um, what did you make of that race? To me, it seemed really exciting. A great crop of young Kiwis on display and a deserved winner at the end of the day. Well, I think, yes, yeah, right. It is, no one wins the Tour of Southland unless you're a deserved winner. It's a, it's a tough bike race. And uh, the race was uh, really exciting this year. Aaron Gate, you know, three stage wins, you go, yeah, of course he was going to win the Tour. But it, you know, that's only if you look at the results. You look at the context of the race and the way the race played out and the, you know, the brilliant ride of Corbin Strong. I think Corbin Strong was, was um, amazing the day they went up the Remarkables. Um, you, know, you could see him battling, fighting on the bike. Uh, Ruben Thompson's ride to take the yellow jersey on the Remarkables, 19 years of age. Uh, to, to have the courage, you know, he's someone you picked it, you know, going into the tour to, to watch out on and dead right, like he... He knew the climb. He knew what he had to do. But to have the courage to take those guys on early on the climb, stunning ride by, by Reuben Thompson. So, yeah, well, well done to him. Um, got a, probably a little bit of a lesson in the crosswinds the, the next day. But, you know, he was also dishing it out for a fair bit of that stage where he could have probably saved a bit of energy and tried to protect the jersey on the way to Bluff. Um, but, yeah, I, I thought he rode really well. Corbin's ride uh, up Bluff to, to take the jersey. And, you know, it's all of Southland hoping that, they would bring, he'd be, you know, <laughs> bring home a win for Southland. I think they've been waiting for 26 years since the last one, uh, but not, not quite. Aaron Gate, uh, his time trial, that was something else. That was, that just shows, you know, the class of Aaron Gate. I, I think, you know, when he was racing over in Europe with, a, with some good equipment, and that sounds bad when you're on a professional team, but sometimes they, they you know, they had those bikes with single chain rings that, all sorts of things and equipment failures at bad times. I think I've robbed him of his career, really. Um, he's, he's a sensational bike rider, truly, truly world class. And that time trial, uh, that was you know the only guy to go under the 16 minutes for the course and and really wet, you know, quite wet conditions. Um, to put himself back into contention after being 55 seconds down on the GC uh, on the Remarkables, um, you know, he fought back and fought back and fought back. Uh, and getting you know that time trial win to get within one second of the yellow jersey that Michael Vink took off the shoulders of of Corbin Strong. So you know again a Grand Tour, <laughs> the fourth Grand Tour if you like, decided uh, by time bonuses, um, and it came right down to that very last last stage. You couldn't have written the script any better for the Tour of Southland. Yeah, I thought it was a really impressive all round uh, ride from Aaron. We saw you know right from the get go, stage one, it was a great time move he had along with James Oram where they got away just going up a you know slight hill got to the front got the stage win um I thought even in the climbs you know obviously we knew he was going to struggle slightly but I thought he, he held on really well he sort of limited the losses and then the time trial like you said and and as soon as it was sort of getting down to that that final stage you you knew he'd be dangerous um in the sprints he's, he's so good there and um it was a it was a good all-round you know he was backed up nicely by the entire Black Spoke team who, who took out the team classification as we probably expected to. Yeah, they, and you would expect them to do that. Like they're, they're a truly professional team and they operate as a, a, you know, just like a professional team does. And they rode that way as well. And, you know, very deserving to take out the, the team's classament. Um, James Oram, you know, he was actually my pick for the tour, really, uh, with, with the remarkable climb and his time trialing ability. I, I thought he was um, going to be re really tough, tough to beat. Uh, but Aaron Gate, um, gee, just just the tenacious way he rode and fought back, and you know the team, the team were there to help him. But when you're in the time trial, there's no one there to help you, and he just he you know he proved his class. And the other ride I thought that really impressed me was Glenn Hayden in that time trial. If you look at the list of riders that finished behind him, you know, he's the national club time trial champion. Uh, he he competes in the over 35 category. And uh, to finish seven seconds behind Aaron Gate, and we know it was a sensational time trial by Aaron Gate, Glenn Hayden, Wanganui's um, very own uh, sensational performance by, by him to, to, push, to push Gate that close. I, I thought that was a real highlight for the tour, for the older guys, uh, and for Glenn himself, and then for the young guys, you know, Reuben Thompson, Corbin Strong, uh, just, just sensational. Yeah, I, I thought Reuben was, was excellent. Um, he, he said he knew that remarkable was climb like the back of the hand and it, and it showed, but the, the way he sort of just kicked with three or four K to go and just, you know, really nice, um, smooth climbing style, I thought. And, you know, we know he's going to 
the FDJ Conti team next year. So he's, he's going to be really exciting to, to keep an eye on, I think. Oh, no, it'd be great to see his progress and see how he develops and you know, gets the opportunity to ride some of the big mountains. Um, that, that's probably one of the longest climbs uh, that we have in New Zealand to race on. And he, he proved there that he was a, a class, a class above. And you know, so, yeah, really looking forward to seeing Ruben and also Lawrence, uh, Lawrence Pithy, who, you know, had a strong finish to the, to the tour as well. Third on the last stage, uh, had a good ride up Bluff Hill and moved himself up the general classification. So a couple of young riders that are going to FDJ Conti team, uh, you know, having a, having a strong showing as well at, at home. So, yeah, it's really exciting for, for New Zealand racing. And I was really impressed with the way Tora Southland was raced. It was really aggressive. It was hard. Um, really positive racing from, from everybody in, in the field and, you know, no one just sat back and said, you know, black, black spoke are here to, to sort of control the race. Everyone, you know, had a go. Um, cre- you know, the Creation Signs team, uh, you know, New Zealand Cycling Project with James Williamson, James Fichet taking the, the sprint ace. And uh, they also got the King of the Mountains with, with Wright. So, you know, that was shared around and the, just the, yeah, the positive nature of the way the teams took the race on, Henry, I think made it such a great race. Yeah, I agree. It was great to see, you know, you had what seemed like basically every day, Matt Zinovich just barreling up the road early on. You had Dylan Kennett, you had guys like Campbell Stewart getting up. There was crosswind stuff where guys were driving it on, trying to split the race apart too. So you're right, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't a stale race by any stretch every day. Someone was there trying to animate it and, and trying to make things happen. Yeah, no, they were. And, you know, hats off to Michael Vink as well, uh, defending champion, he did a lot of work on the on both Bluff Hill and the Remarkables. Um, he set the tempo. He was the wheel everyone wanted to follow. So, you know, he, he did everything he could, I, I thought, to, to defend that title. Um, it was always going to be a big ask when it come down to, to sprinting against not, not just Aaron Gate himself, but the structure of the team and the, the riders they've got, got around Gate to put him in the position. But Michael Vink, I know he was, I think, initially disappointed, but, you know, second... Uh, uh, is no mean feat and, and he rode exceptionally well and uh, show, shows why he's a two times winner and uh, you know, he'll be back better and stronger and faster again again next year uh, for, to try and get that, that third win in the Tour of Southland but I thought Michael Vink rode uh, an exceptionally good race and you know, he probably did the bulk of the work on, on those big climbs and, and um, to try and give himself every chance of winning the race so yeah another you know, impressive ride. Um, there were so many James Oram, as you've mentioned, it was impressive as well. So yeah, it was exciting. It was really good to see. Um, and Corbin Strong, you know, what can't he do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's not, let's not forget, he's world champion on the track. And there he was fighting on the Remarkables, winning on Bluff Hill. Um, you know, okay, he didn't, didn't time trial quite as well as he, as he would have liked, but boy, he, he won the young riders uh, jersey and you know he'll he'll get that one for southland one day i'm sure yeah that that's the thing that's really exciting about him is is just the versatility that he's he's got he can mix it in the sprints he's obviously you know world champ on the track and and up the climbs he goes pretty well too <laughs> um Another, another local race that's happening on Sunday is the National Criterium Championships down in Christchurch. Um, that one's going to be streamed on the Sky Sport Next YouTube channel, which is good news, so you can tune in and watch that. Um, first of all, Dale, what sort of racing do we expect from this Christchurch course? And, you know, is it traditionally pretty hard and fast and pretty flat out? Yeah, it's a, it was last year was the first time at, uh, the, the Nationals went down to Christchurch and it was a huge success. Uh, big crowds turned out, beautiful circuit. You're racing along the, the, the river there and, uh, you know, you've got the, the, the bars and that across and it's a beautiful setting under the tree. So let's hope for, uh, you know, the end of Cup Week. It's a, it's a nice, sunny, hot day and the people of Christchurch come and watch some bike, bike racing after a week of horse racing. Um, Really, really strong fields. It's a great course. It's it is really fast. So you know, if it's dry, it's it's um, the racing will be really aggressive. It's a sort of circuit that it, I think encourages people to to attack um, and try and get away. Uh, we the sprinters, they, of course, they want to keep it together. The quality of the riders in the field, you know, in the women's race, we've got defending champion Ali Wollaston, who will have, you know, probably the biggest target on her back because she's such a fantastic bunch race rider. Uh, Got a fantastic sprint finish on it, but will be challenged all the way. You know, Charlotte Lucas, 
Olivia Ray going down there to ride. I, I, I rate her as a finish, you know, with, with a good sprint finish as well. So I think we're going to see a really exciting, aggressive race uh, in the elite woman, Nicole Shields, uh, of course, um, another one of the uh, endurance track riders going down to try and get this title. So it's the first title of the 2021 season, if you like, that uh, will be decided. So it'd be a good, strong field in the women's race, uh, the men's race. Lawrence Pithy's the defending champion. So um, he won that last year, his first sort of senior race and the hometown favourite. But I think the fields are a little bit stronger this year. I'm not saying that Pithy won't be in with a chance because he's going to be right in the mix for sure. But you've got, you know, the man we've just been talking about, Aaron Gate lining up, um, Campbell Stewart's lining up, Corbin Strong's lining up, Nick Kirkazee. Uh, Ollie Jones, you know, um, Luke Mudgeway. There's so many riders that can can take this this race out. It's it's going to be really exciting. I think it's going to be probably the hardest sport national criterium championships uh, for the elite men that I've seen in probably the last sort of half a dozen years. Yeah, and you mentioned a lot of those names there. I certainly, when I was looking at the the women's field, um, yeah, Ali Williston and. Uh, Charlotte Lucas looked like the two favourites for me in that one. Um, when we know Charlotte's had a pretty good year overseas and, you know, she's had some world tour races in there. So I think she'll be in pretty good form. And we've seen a lot of the, um, the, the people on the track have got quite a good build up with the way they've been racing this year. And in the men's, yeah, I tend to think Aaron Gate, especially with a lot of those black spoke boys in there as well, they might be able to set up a few things for him. But like you say, Campbell Stewart and, and Corbin Strong are, are pretty damn good sprinters as well. So it'll be really interesting to see, I guess, whether we get a bunch sprint or whether we get a, a sort of move from Black Spoke that sort of sets gate up. I'm not really sure how it's all going to play out. No, there's, there's, there's riders in there that know, you know, we, it's, we can't wait for the sprint finish. We've got to be aggressive. We've got to try and get away. And there's some horsepower in there to, to do that. Um, you know, like Dan Whitehouse, uh, you know, he's a sensational climber. Um, he, yeah, he will be aggressive in the race and knows, he, you know, he's never going to win it in the sprint, so he has to make it hard. Uh, and then there's riders that really, you know, want to take some scalps, don't they? You know, you've got Bailey O'Donnell, you know, he, um, he was on the attack a number of times in, in Southland and put on a strong performance again, look, look for that breakaway. You get half a dozen riders away on the circuit. They work well together. They can take the corners a little bit quicker. Um, it's it's not going to be over. And if all eyes are on, you know, Gate or, you know, if, that, if that's the man that, that Black Spoke going to race for, they might want to think about Luke Mudgeway, you know, former world champion on the track. And um, as a junior, he's got a good kick on him and sprint finish. And, yeah, so just if the field looks at Gate, they'll surprise somewhere else. If they, for the breakaway, they've got Ethan Bat. You know, again, they, they'll go down there and, and ride as a team. That'll be their goal for, you know, obviously is to, to win the race. And and because they are a team, they've got the advantage, you know, as the other riders are in this race, um, to, to ride off them, if you like, ride off the Black Spoke team and see see what they can throw at them. And it's going to be exciting. It's going to be really fast. And, yeah, I'd encourage everybody to jump online and, and have a look because it's a beautiful setting, great circuit. And we're going to see a sensational, you know, national championships. Absolutely. Really looking forward to that one. And, yeah, just reminding again, it will be on the Sky Sport Next YouTube channel on Sunday. So plenty of good coverage there to follow exactly what's going on. Um, thanks again for your time, Dale. Good good catch up. And, uh, yeah, I guess there's probably probably not too much happening after national crits finished. Anything else coming up after that? Yeah, there's, um, well, there's a little bit on towards the end of the season, of course. Um, we've got... The, the, the criterium this weekend and then in a couple of weeks time we've got the omnium and national madison championships so i think it'll be you know just really really strong fields uh both in the uh women's and men's uh, for the omnium and the madison championship so you know we might have some time to catch up on those and then of course um the national road race championships will be in, in january so um it'll be interesting to see what happens henry who comes home who doesn't but i think the focus uh in the, in the short term is definitely Sunday and then the you know it's called the Cambridge three day at, at the velodrome uh, with the Omnium and the Madison championships um, if you're in the area really worth checking out because again it's an international field there'll be more world champions riding around at the at the Cambridge three day than you'd probably get at the European championships <laughs> that sounds good uh, well, we'll have to keep an eye on those thanks again for your time Dell and I uh, will catch up soon thank you 